Time for another edition of the Baselli Breakdown. J.P. Shadrick with Hall of Famer Tony Baselli. After another Jags loss, another close loss, they're right on the edge of getting these wins, but just not playing well enough overall. And, hey, these are big games in December. Can't keep dropping these, Tony. What about the one in Cleveland? They were right there in the end and just couldn't finish it. Yeah, this is a uh, team that is uh, beating itself right now more than anything. And I think you look at the last two weeks, those are games that you felt like you probably should have won or you very you at least had a chance and did not play your best football, uh, especially defensively, concerning, you know, giving up 65 points in the last two games against two backup quarterbacks. And, you know, we talk about our injuries, and, yes, we have some significant injuries at key positions, no doubt about it. And I think we felt those. But so did Cleveland. I mean, Cleveland was out. You had three backup offensive linemen and a backup quarterback in there as well. So it's that time of year. It's uh, a little bit of attrition. You got to fight through it, um, and guys are going to have to step up. And we, uh, you got to start JP by not beating yourself because you know you're playing you're playing teams, and you played last week a team that was fighting for their playoff lives. Um, you're now uh, playing a team that's the number one seed in the AFC. Um, so you're, you have your work cut out for you, and you got to play clean football. And especially when you do have key injuries, you can't be helping the other team beat you. Tony, not that they needed any more motivation, but yes, as you mentioned, the Ravens are now the number one seed. They, um, If they needed any energy at all, I think they'll have it down the stretch now in Baltimore. Great running team, fantastic defense to go with it, obviously, and arguably playing the, the best football in the AFC right now and, and clearly the number one seed currently. Well, they're playing the best, but the record says they're playing the best. They're the yeah. number one seed, so just look at the record. There's uh, – <laughs> And the AFC, though, still is wide open. I think we saw that on Monday Night Football this week with, you know, everyone thought the Dolphins would walk through the Titans and be over and no problem, and the Titans came back and beat them. So, you know, Sunday night, the Ravens are going to come in, number one seed, and they're going to come in a favorite, and they got a really physical defense. And they got a dynamic quarterback, obviously, and Lamar Jackson. they got the rookies, A. Flowers, outside, the speed demon. So they're a good football team. We're gonna have to match that physicality. We're gonna have to control that. Try to control the line of scrimmage. And um, I still think this Jaguar team, even in its current status, because of how wide open the AFC is, there's you can lose to anybody in the playoff hunt, and you can beat anybody in the playoff hunt. And this is a great opportunity. Again, national television Sunday night. Get that. Get the taste out of your mouth that you've had the last couple of weeks. We're I think as a player, you look back and say, my goodness, like we beat ourselves. Like we're doing things that are not characteristic of who we are uh, when we're playing good football. And they got to clean that up and, and uh, hopefully they get some guys back healthy too this week. And finally, Tony, uh, we, we saw the guttiness, if you will, of Trevor Lawrence to play through the ankle sprain last week, but he had three interceptions to go with that. The Jags gave it up four times in that game. You, I'm sure from a player's perspective, you love seeing Trevor fight through injuries again. It's the second time on a short week this season. He's done it and gutted it out and played. But you still need to perform when you're out there playing too. So what can we expect from Trevor maybe trying to bounce back from that performance last week? Well, you know he's going to be out there because he doesn't miss games. We're figuring that out this year, you know, coming back after a short week against New Orleans with the MCL this week, another short week, uh, uh, high, ankle, high ankle sprain. And he put, you know, yeah, the interceptions you don't like, but those aren't all on Trevor either. And so it's like everybody needs to play better. You know, if you run if you run the wrong route and the quarterback throws it where you're supposed to be, is that interception on the quarterback or is that on the receiver? So they need to clean that up in the pass game. I um, mean, obviously Trevor has to be smart with the football. You can't put your defense in situations where they're defending half the field or they, they're getting starting position, and as they did after the Parker Washington fumble, at the plus 20. I mean, you're right there on the edge of the red zone, you know, for first down. And the, offensively, you got to clean those things up. You, you can't allow that to happen. Um, and I think the big weakness right now of this offense is the, not Trevor Lawrence and worrying about his injury. He's fine. It's the run game. And so they find themselves in, in uh, last week, they found themselves in the game last week where they threw it, Dropped back 57 times. Trevor ran it three times and he was sacked four. That's, and he had 50 attempts. I mean, only 17 rushes. That formula, I don't think, works. And so they're going to have to figure out a way against a really good Ravens front seven to run the ball a little bit at least. 
It doesn't get easier, that's for sure. Certainly in December, the Ravens this week, the number one seed coming in on Sunday Night Football. And we'll talk to you again next week, Tony. Appreciate it. Thanks, JP. For more exclusive content like this, make sure you check out our show, Jaguars Weekly UK, every Wednesday, 9 p.m. on Sky Sports NFL. Thank you.